Oh, look, a stick. <laughs> Perfect for our Easter tree. I brought my sticks home and put, tried the different ones, holding them up in the room. And I picked my favorite one, which was the biggest. And I put it in the vase and the vase fell over. So I went outside and got a bunch of rocks and I gently put them around the stick so they hold the stick up. Now, if you don't have a vase, you could also do this in a cup or a bucket or anything that looks springish and is a vessel for holding things. Now, I'm going to take the stick back out and paint it and do my embroidery floss to turn it into my spring tree. Then I'm going to bring it back in. Okay, so I've started working on um, my tree and you can do the whole thing with paint or you can do the whole thing with embroidery floss or you can do a little mix. I started mine a little lower than I needed to because um, I just wanted to practice. But this part's actually gonna be covered with the rocks. What I wanna do if I'm gonna use the embroidery floss is it comes like this and um, I it, uh, it usually has a, one little thread sticking out. And to not get it tangled, I hold it gently from the other side, then pull some floss out. And this way it doesn't um, get knotted up, at least to start with. I'll cut that off. Now, and I just got, I don't know, a couple feet worth. That might be more than I need. Now I'm just gonna take some glue and squeeze it on my branch. And I'm gonna go all the way around. So I'm gonna take my finger and put my glue all the way around the branch. Ah, it's dripping. And if it gets on my paint part, um, it doesn't matter because it's just, uh, it dries clear. Um, and if I were, what I would do next time, this was just a practice, so it's fine, but I had to, um, kind of wait for the paint to dry before I could do more glue part. So, um, next time I'll probably do all the thread parts, then do all the paint parts because then you don't have to wait. So I put my thread down. I'm take the rest of mine and kind of ball it up a little. And I'm gonna send that around. And the trick to making it look good, the embroidery floss, is to have it tight against um, the one before. Um, Cause otherwise it can start looking a little messy. So I'm trying not to go on top of each one. I'm just trying to get next to. So, and if the glue gets up on the embroidery, embroidery floss, it doesn't matter. It just makes it a little bit um, hard, but I think that works with what we're going for here. And you don't have to, I picked spring colors, um, but you can do this um, for any colors. You could do it, you could make it your um, uh, team colors if you wanted to do your school colors. Or if you have a football team that you watch, you can make it, you know, orange and blue. If you're for Auburn Tigers like me, or Eagle. Um, and you can use it for a centerpiece for that. But since I'm using mine as a spring centerpiece, I did kind of light pastel colors, pink and green and purple and blue. Now I've got a little extra glue here. I can wipe it over the top if I want it to be a little crunchy or I can just wipe it off. I have a paper towel with me. I always try to have a paper towel when I'm doing crafts. So that looks good. I'm also, I'm trying to do kind of varying lengths. So some are short, some are long. Um, and now I'm gonna paint a little more. So I've got a paintbrush and I use some craft paints um, that I had. And the trick on craft paints, put your finger on the top and shake them up first. I did not shake up this one and it looks totally gross. Um, and now I'm gonna think about what goes well next to green. I think I'm gonna use um, the pink that I did shake up and put that next to the green. Red and green are opposites on the color wheel. And so they um, a lot of times will look good next to each other especially if they're not the pure form of the color, 
like a real dark green and a real dark red. I mean, they use it for Christmas, but I wouldn't use it all the time. It's kind of intense. But this is green with a lot of yellow and white mixed in it. And this pink is red and white. So they're kind of opposites, but they're a little bit of a mix. Hmm, I did a thin one. I think I'm gonna make this one thicker. Try to make a thicker band. It's weird, I try to do different, um, different widths and then somehow in my brain, it just like makes them the same color, the same width. So I have to kind of fight against it. It's like my brain thinks one inch is a good, good distance, I guess. Um, I was gonna go up there. Now, if I were doing it with floss and paint, like I am, it's much easier to paint where it's um, like where the branch is um, dividing into two different things than to do the floss on that. But if you're doing the whole thing in floss, I'm sure you can figure it out. Um, I'm rinsing my brush. And then a lot of times after I rinse my brush, when I'm using craft paints like this, they're kind of thin. So after I rinse my brush, I think it's clean, but I'll wipe it on the paper towel. Turns out it's not clean. And it's like super um, wet. These paints are a little thin. So getting out a little bit of that wetness is good for me. Um, so after the pink, the pink's a little dark. So now I'm gonna go do some white to have some contrast. Contrast is when you have um, variety. So I don't want a dark color next to a dark color next to a dark color. It um, would look boring. So I'm gonna kind of spice it up with a little white. And since I did a long band on that last one, I'm gonna think, I think I'm gonna do my white as a short band. And sometimes um, I'll uh, be thinking about it, what, um, what width I'm gonna do, but otherwise sometimes it's just, I do what seems to look good to me. And it might vary what looks good to you. Um, there you go. So I'm just gonna keep painting and painting all the way up the branch. Now, if it turns out my branch is too long, I can break some of the sticks off. Um, it takes longer than I thought. If I were to do it again, I might have picked the second biggest branch. Um, cause then actually, if you wanted to make it a centerpiece on your table, a small branch would be better because then you can look across the table and see your, um, your family or whomever you're eating with. With a big one like this, I have to put it, I can't put it in the middle of the table or no one would be able to talk to each other. Um, but I think it's going to look cool. So I will keep going and I will show you the finished product in, in a few. Here's my finished tree. You can display it plain or you could add ornaments or eggs or little birds would be cute. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Subscribe and I'll see you next time on Art Happy with Katie.